precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for these meetings. We want to thank God for each one of us who has been called to serve in this ministry. We have been, the Feed My Lambs Youth Ministry has been in existence to, to, to close to now three decades. There are people who have come, who've been here, they've come and gone. Some of them have gone to other places of worship, others have been called to serve <clears throat> in various other ministries, others are serving in the church outside the country. We've been, we, we, we've been here for quite a, a while and we've seen um, people transition even from <clears throat> here. When Flynn began, it began with secondary school, sorry, primary school level with the, with the pastoral classes. And at that time, that's all that we would do. I myself joined, <clears throat> joined the ministry. Then I later joined Crisco. I, I was a member of Flyam when I first came to Crisco in the 90s, must have been 93. I first came, there was a young man who was a neighbor where we used to stay. She told me, he told me, sorry, um, come, come, I show you a group of young people who love God and worship God and serve God, even with their youth. So when I came, that time they used to meet at KICC room five and six up there, up there. And then also sometimes we would be down here at the, at the banking hall. There's a KCB bank in, uh, in KICC. And those days the, the tellers used to, <clears throat> if you're going to be served, you're going to, you, would, you would queue inside the hall. <clears throat> when you enter KCC, either from the fountain side or from the back side, just when you step into, into the hall there, now I think that place where I can heal the seat, the, the, the place used to be open. So there used to be teller windows there. So that's where we would put our seats on Sunday morning. That whole space, when you enter, it's either when you're coming from the back side, it's on the left, and then you're coming from the front side where there are the fountains. It's on the right. That place we would, we would put worship team would be standing close to the teller window. And, and then we'd, uh, we'd line up, we'd arrange the black seats and fill up that whole place. So when I joined, that is uh, where the church service is to be. So we'd come early in the morning, pray up, Sometimes we'd have missions that people would go to churches. Those days, I remember there are not so many, many missions to high schools, but now they began. Because I remember we'd, we'd be missions to Nakuru, places where you'd go and come back. Because uh, at the same time, my parents never used to allow me to go for missions. The only mission I'd go for was one I would go, like I'm going, it's a day mission where you go like and go minister in the morning, then you come back by evening so that nobody will know whether you went for a mission or not. So most of the time I'd be in church. So when I came, that is a time where missions uh, for high schools were opening up. Because we had, even in the ministry, there, there are many primary school children who would pray for the sick. If you've heard of people, even ministering at KICC were primary school worship team, or local primary schools. And now those who are in primary now, they've graduated, they've gone from one, from two, from three. There are people who would lead the lunch hour meetings up on our evening meetings, even Sunday service. People who, the young people I remember would be drunk in the Holy Ghost when I when I, when I honor, God would show them stuff. Just as young as they were, very zealous. I remember if you didn't know Kim Mokumu, Kim Mokumu those days, he had just finished high school, primary school. I think he, he was in one of the schools in Isili. Then he went to Starehe Boys. So sometimes in Fomuan, <clears throat> he comes to City Hall in his shorts. 
That's the rare boy. You see, the rare boy coming. Very prayerful, very committed as young as a young person. Yeah. People who are given to are given to prayer. People would fast. Saturdays would come. All the days. Think of all the days. We never missed a Saturday meeting where people would just pray. You pray for your life, you pray for your family, you pray for the church, you pray for the nation. Those are the days God would speak a lot about the nation. Those are the days when people would ask, what is Crisco saying? What God is asking? What is God is God is speaking to Crisco concerning the nation? You know, and many of those words the Lord would give you and the young people at that time. Then we had mamas who would stand with us in prayer. There are people, even like somebody like Mama Anne, she's been here. Me, since I joined Crisco, I've met Mama Anne. She was among the intercessors who would just be moving with the children, interceding for the children, with the children standing in the gap. There was such love. Love, love is among the pillars in the ministry. There was such love at that time where we would, um, everybody, like you come and because gay or Julian, I know all your brothers because gay, I know your mom and dad, even if they're not born again, you are one big family. And if people decided to visit you, we will visit a whole lot of people, a whole group of ministry. So most of the members of the family knew us, even if they're not born again. And they become, became a large, such, their love just drew them. Somehow some of them got born again in the process. And so, what do I mean? It's like people in your family know where you go to church, know who you hang out with, know what you believe, and they can see that you're not, um, they, they can see what you're involved in, and they have a testimony about your life. You know, it's not like now some of us, uh, maybe you have challenges here, and the people don't even know, they, they wonder where you go, uh, whether it's a cult or not, what you're involved in. Those days, there was no such question. And if they were somehow, we just visit family, we just one, begin one song like this, the presence of God comes. Things will just happen and people would just find answers. If they had misgivings about you or ministry, they, they, they would, that would just disappear somehow. The love was, was actually tangible. And for me, that is what drew me to come. And remember, I used to go to NPC those days, Valley Road. So I would say, mm -hmm. I'll go there for morning, morning devotion or the morning service and then I come to KICC for, because many times after the service, we would have what you call a revival, afternoon revival meetings. So that those who, who have come for service and they want to go back home, they can go home, but those who want to stay on for a revival meeting where there would just be praise and worship and the word in the evening up to like, it was like seven o'clock. That's when we would finish the revival meetings. We were calling them revival meetings. People would remain. And I remember people used to, I mean, the love was tangible, but would, would save, not save money, we would just contribute whatever amount you had. Then we would go buy chips, ukochini, and come eat together as a ministry, you know, like all of us. We just eat together. Waiting for the meeting to take off in the afternoon. Yeah, I remember those days, there were no issues about boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't know, these issues that um, I'm seeing every day with people, boys boys enticing girls or talking to this girl so, suggestively, talking to the other one, and then you go to another one, and then you've talked to three girls and all of them are now hurting because you apparently seem like you're saying something, Kumbe, you are saying nothing, and they're already engrossed in all that kind of emotion or sisters trying to entice brothers, you know, all these crazy things I see with, with the brethren nowadays, those things were unheard of. I was a young person like you, sometimes I look at you, those of us who are not married, I wonder, how come you're getting overtaken? Is there something missing? Is there something mm, not taught? Where are we getting it wrong? Because honestly speaking, those days, it was true focus on God, genuine, you know, love for God and, and, and desiring to live holy and fearing God. 
not trying to do things to to please the pastor or or just hide there but you're not serious it was not like that at all people used to fear god for who he is and they used to worship god and i mean god would just come in the meetings i think out of that genuineness that was in people's hearts and the focus and just the uprightness you're not here trying to cheat your brother you're not here trying to connect you're not here trying to to show your cleavage so that now so and so i mean all these things that i'm seeing <clears throat> right now happening were not among were not named in our midst at all honestly at all at all at all later on if i can tell you something later on uh because when i came to flyem i just finished high school so I could say maybe age like now for Debra. Debra is is about to wrap up high school. Yeah. So I came and the young man who the young man who who brought me to the ministry that day. I think those days he was a missions coordinator. I don't know who the missions coordinator would call that right now. I think at some point in his heart he looked at me and he thought I can be a good wife. but he never told me anything later on I had, when i got married he went to speak to one of the pastors there and said oh he was disappointed that it what happened but let me tell you i i will say up to now if i ever said he 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 catered me or <clears throat> he behaved in an unbecoming way to us i'd be cheating he was very focused so if that was a desire in his heart and he never voiced it he never told me he never showed me any any other side from what i knew him as a man of god so what am i saying even if those things are there maybe he was praying he would keep, he would be praying he would be, he, he had been praying silently but he never showed me anything he never behaved in an unbecoming way he never disrespected me in any way he never if i say so i would be cheating so later on uh i out see the mother teaching me well the mother was a deaconess in the church but so what am i saying so even if there were those things people really if it's when we talk about praying it was it's praying it was praying it was not praying and also finding yourself you know in, in the flesh and mendling into people's affairs and doing funny crazy things no 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 so my prayer is god will restore us back to those places God restore us really back to genuine love and service and the fear of God and and reminding how we walk you know and honoring the call of God in our lives because God has called us God has called us with a with a with a high calling he has called us with a specific mandate for the young people and he is watching over his word to accomplish it and will be answerable god called we see examples of how god called people in the in the word of god we see abraham god called him and god told him come out from among your people i will show you a place because he wanted to use him in certain ways God called Moses to 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 deliver the children of Israel from the hand of the Egyptians. God has given us a call in this work. There's a call and there's an expectation on how we need to serve God and and and, and knowing that call. And this call when even when a pastor was given this word concerning this work, it started just at that level like I said primary school. And now gradually at that time i can i can assure you he didn't know it would graduate into colleges and universities because he just used to do pastoral he believed when you catch the children at that level and they get a good foundation and they grow up they will become solid people but it graduated into high school so that now where the people went for high school who would get access to their schools and many other schools that got brought in and it did not just stop there it graduated now into now university and now colleges 
where they continue to grow and you know continue to grow and take up the 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 the, the, the Christian unions in these institutions. And now we have those flamers who have become who are leaders in churches and their family people. And that's why you have some of this representation of some of you who are here and you, you go from secondary school and now you are family people. Yeah, so we, we, we are continuing with this, uh, this, this, this call, many of us here and some of us who are joining in. And so today I just want to talk about the Ministry Code of Conduct and some of the protocol that is expected of us as we serve God, as we give ourselves in this vineyard, as we relate to one another, what is the expectation, how are we supposed to carry out ourselves so that we operate in integrity and in the fear of God and also are able to, to gain, get the full benefit. When you talk about code of ethics, what do we mean? What, are, what, what is understanding? What are we saying? We could say that these are guiding principles. Yeah? Guiding principles that are designed to help us conduct ministry with integrity. We've talked about integrity. We've talked about character over and over, over and over the years. Because we normally believe that um, without character, without integrity, you, you are life short, short lived. You don't go far when you, when you lack integrity, when you, even if you're gifted and you're dripping with oil and you are anointed to the core, but your character is wanting and you don't have integrity, you will find that you, you don't, you will not accomplish much. So we want to look at some of those guiding principles, some of those uh, things that help us stand in integrity, help us stand as far as our character is concerned and be able to accomplish the, the call of God over our lives. How are we supposed to serve when we are in, in, in the work? How are we supposed to serve? You know? And remembering that our primary responsibility, first, foremost, you know, is to love God. Because we, before you came to, to fly, you, I'm sure some of you maybe got saved here. Some of you came when you already so, so, born again. Our love for God must be tangible, you know? We must, it must be tangible that you love God. That's how we are here getting trained so that we can spread this love of God. And you know, we re remember that um, the, the, the love is also a pillar. We have love, we have worship, we have intercessory. And we have what? Evangelism eh? as the pillars of the ministry. Love is what drew, I told you, drew me into the work because the love was, then it was real. It was real. But when you talk about the love of God being real, it was real. It drew, it drew me from wherever I was going. I couldn't continue going there anymore. Later on, God explained to me why, because I, I, I would ask him, even when I didn't know that God would, can, can be able to speak to me expressly, why are you allowing me to come this way? Why is it that I always desire to go this way and then I find myself coming this way? At one time, he told me <clears throat> it's because of the fivefold ministry work. And I didn't even know what fivefold ministry was at that time because in those years, even just the mention of fivefold was strange. And it was a doctrine that was new. It was a, it was a subject that people were yet to get understanding, you know, about it. But that is the answer I got. I remember very well, that is the answer I received. Then I just settled and I continued to, 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 to come. And here I am. 
Now, to fulfill your responsibility and to love God, what do you need to do? Number one, Romans chapter 12, verse one talks about presenting ourselves as a holy living sacrifice. You know, a life of worship, giving yourself, giving yourself. So our life of worship is a responsibility for you as an individual. And that you realize, uh, you find that a lot in our, in our meetings, in our lives, in the schools. As you go there, worship, as worship happens, cleansing happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're able to, when you, when you take your position and just begin to worship God, your life transforms. The environment also transforms. You find that is a time. Things will begin to happen. Their hearts of the, 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 the people in the schools will begin to melt. That is how you get an inroad and be, begin to minister. So worship is very is a responsibility we have when we go. Sometimes you might not. That is a tool and that is a, a style I can say God has given us as a ministry. When you engage in worship, and I'm sure you can attest to this, when you engage in worship, wherever you go, that becomes an inroad and the things just begin to happen. You are never the same. You are never the same, number one, as missionaries. And number two, even the people where you're going to minister are never the same. You know, the school is never the same. The teachers are never the same. So just know that worship is a pattern that is given to us and is one of the tools that we have seen bear results, bring results in the places we have gone. Even with just simple songs, even if you say it's Sunday school song, but because it is a tool God has given, when you engage it automatically, I'm sure you can attest to this, eh? automatically you are able to see things begin to change and things begin to manifest. So it's our responsibility to love God, to worship him at first as, as individuals and to collectively as a ministry. And whatever to go to serve, we know that that is a tool God gives us among other things. Now, we need to develop a regular devotional life. Yeah? Even with all the training we are receiving, uh, you have to work on yourself as an individual. I heard some of you say earlier, Last time you were told that you cannot, you cannot um, detach yourself from a prayer of fasting and, and, and a life of prayer and fasting as a, as, a, as a flyer. Because that keeps you on your toes, that is able to, to refresh you, that is able to give you direction, that is able to, to, to put you at a place where you're able to minister to somebody else because of you also taking responsibility and feeding and nourishing yourself in the Lord. The aspect of reading the word, finding your own times to meditate on the word and just letting the word also work on you because as the word works on you, then you'll find that you are a vessel that is, is ready to be, to be a vessel that can be used, you know, when the master has a need, then you can be used. Because also the word is working on you, the Holy Spirit is also working on you. Another, asp another thing that is very important for us as flyers is being to, uh, able to act in obedience. Eh? Scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is very key because when you begin, when, you, when, we, we get, when we walk in disobedience, when we don't take instructions, when you Disobedience to first and foremost, even just to God, you find then your life is out, gets out of order. You can't even minister. You can't, I mean, you can't hear God. You can't even go out for the missions because then what are you going to give? What are we, what are we, you can only give out of the abundance of what there is down there. So an, a, a life of obedience is very key for you because that keeps your, your, your communication line open. That keeps your, you refreshed and, 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 you know, connected. 
then now you're able to to give out what you have. We've got to have a lifestyle that pleases God, a lifestyle that pleases God, a lifestyle that even those in your school know this one is 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 a, is a is a messenger of Christ. Those in your family know you are you are born again. Those anywhere, wherever you're placed, people can attest. They can give your testimony because of the way your life portrays Jesus. So we have to live a life that pleases God. Whether those who know us are watching or not, you are responsible for your life. And your life illuminates Christ. Your life pleases the Lord. Your life speaks of Christ. Another thing I have come to learn that is very essential for us is tithing. When you when when you're able to acknowledge God's ownership of all by giving. We know students normally say they don't have money, but I know me and my mother, I know that we know we normally say yeah with other parents. Students, I think, are the most the, the, the richest. Sometimes we find these students because they just take from you. They at one point they can have more money than you as a parent. So I know sometimes they say, oh, I don't tithe because I'm not working, but you receive something. And if you have that, uh, you get that culture from when you're a young person, that tithing will not be a problem. It rebukes the devourer for your sake, it opens for, for you. Then you also just acknowledge that God is the owner. You know, you're not stuck. Your hand is not full of gum holding whatever comes and not letting go. It, it helps us in our lives as individuals and all that. Now, and just look at um, relational issues eh? as far as ministry is concerned. When, when we are handling one another and even when we are out there, what is the expectation? Number one, I'll tell us, we need to be circumspect in all our, all our ways, all our relationships. To the best of our ability, be circumspective. You honor yourself, number one, you respect yourself, then you respect your brother. That means you, 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 you watch out how, how you talk. You don't allow unwholesome talk out of your mouth. You don't behave yourself indecently, uh, in you know, when you're together. Yeah. You don't, uh, you know, you, you are circumspect in all your relationships. You do your very best to carry yourself in a way that brings glory to God, in a way that does not uh, even defame us as a work. You, 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 you are circumspe circumspective in your, in your relationship. I don't know whether I'm making sense. You're careful. In word and in deed, you are careful. You are careful to represent Christ properly. Hmm? You're seeking to be an example of Christ-like behavior. You know, you're able to display love, the love of God. You're able to display faith. Yeah? You don't just, you don't just despair. You're able to display faith. You're able to display integrity in a way that will inspire others to follow. You know, is your, does your life portray that? Is your life the kind of life that people will, are inspired to follow and want to, you, to, to, to be like? Take an example, you know? Am I the kind of person who displays, even when somebody is going through something, I can't speak faith? Huh? I can't, I'm not able to, you know, stand in, in, in integrity in a way that when others look, they, they are also inspired, they are encouraged to follow. You know, they look at you and want to admire. Are you able to do that? Yeah, so just being able to live a life that is circumspectful, a life that is an example of Christ-like behavior. 
Yeah. There's also uh, something I, I, I'd want to say. Even when you talk about uh, relational issues amongst ourselves, as children of God, as members of, of, the, of, the, of, of the ministry, and even for those of us who are uh, members of our home, because not all of us, okay, some of us are coming from different places. Yeah. You know, as young people, wherever we are, we can be caught up in this. Eh? So there's something called gossip that we need to avoid. You know, be the kind of, who will not be there, gossiping about everything that passes. Yeah. And also just being able to stop others. If you have friends who like that kind of a thing, just diligently being able to stop others from engaging in this like destructive behavior. Yeah. Gossip is a killer. Gossip is, is, a, is a destructive behavior. And it's not something we want to engage in as children of God and even members of the ministry. But on the contrary, I'd like to say something. Those of us who've gone through commitment class, I'm sure you were taught something that says, when you see something wrong, going wrong, you're a committed member, you're seeing something going wrong in the church, you're seeing something go going wrong in the, in the work. You need to take responsibility and report it. You need to take responsibility and share that thing. You can't be sitting, something is going wrong. You can see it's a mistake. You can see it's destructive, but you are saying you will not snitch on your, on your friend. That is not called snitching. If something is going wrong and the Lord has allowed you to be aware of it, the Lord has allowed you to see it happen, it is important that you take responsibility and share it out to the leadership. That one there, you don't call it gossip. That one there, you don't call it snitching because if it is something that is happening in the boat where you are and you're there quiet, the boat will sink as you're in, the, in there. And you know, you are responsible because you are aware of it and you, will, you do not say anything. If it is something that should be corrected, if it is something that should be brought to the attention of the leaders, it is prudent that you should share it to the people concerned, to the leadership concerned, so that it is handled and then the boat remains stable. So that is the different aspect from, from gossip. That is not gossip. Just like in your house, your sister or brother could be doing something wrong. You don't keep quiet because mom and dad were kijua kutakuaje. Kama ni kitumbaya, afadhali wajue wa shugulikie kwa sababu ni vibaya kama unaona inatandeka na umenyamaza na haujasema chochote. So that is different from gossip. Is that clear? Don't see something wrong. Don't see somebody's life going off and keep quiet because you, nowadays you people call it snitching. It's not that and if 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 you 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 and if things go wrong and you never said anything you know that person's blood is like in your hand eh? because you are aware you saw it you knew it but you decided to zip your mouth that is lack of wisdom as a mature person as you continue to grow they aren't just to differentiate that from gossip there's what you call gossip and the protocol reporting a matter that needs attention of the leaders, the attention of your parents. For the sake, especially for the sake of the entire work, that this thing does not do what? Bring us all in trouble. Yet we could have handled it before things got overboard. Yeah? So please understand that there's a difference between gossiping and bringing a matter to the attention of the leaders before things go haywire. I, I, ho I hope I am understood. Another thing is also when you go to school, sometimes we, we, are, we, are, we are put to cancel the, 
the students. Some of the matters are confidential. We need to maintain strict confidentiality, especially in, in this counseling setting where you're handling some, somebody's life and you need to handle it carefully. <clears throat> we need to maintain high confidentiality when we are counseling with each other. That is different. These are things you continue to learn as we progress on with ministry and with life. You continue to learn, you continue to grow and God gives us the wisdom and how to also, how to handle some of the things. And if it is too much, we escalate it to our leaders. You know, you know that. Don't handle a matter that is beyond you, that is, um, that is too heavy on you. Then you, you find that you beat a snag. It's better to escalate the matter. If you're handling a matter and it is beyond you, if you're handling a matter and you get stranded or stuck sometimes, let it be, go forward so that now the person can get help. Instead of uh, struggling with it and you find that you have, you have a challenge getting a solution. So please let's uh, learn to do that. If you're handling a thing and it's too much on you, let's learn to escalate it to the leadership so that the person can get the help there they deserve. Another point I could say, uh, for us to, as we are relating with one another, relating in the ministry, like now when we have been called to do the, go through train, training or there are certain conferences that are going, going to be coming up, avail yourself for them, avail yourself so that you become a better person, so that you can learn more and just get good exposure that will make you uh, improve you as a person, make you better. So let's be able to avail ourselves so that we can be uh, enhanced. Now, when we, are, when we are ministering to one another, when we are talking to another, when you're in those counseling sessions, eh? and we are not supposed to minister to a person of the opposite sex, unless in the presence of one or more responsible people, yeah? Unless also maybe that can in that in a setting that can be seen and it's an interoperable but responsible person. You're handling people of the opposite sex must be with some guidance. Why? So that you avoid you avoid getting ourselves into trouble while ministering, while doing ministry. We avoid getting ourselves into trouble while, while we are doing uh, ministry. It's very, very, very key because uh, the journey is long and so therefore we must put some measures in place. I'm sure some of us who have been able to go out there and minister, you understand when I say that. And if you don't understand, you'll understand by and by. When, when We've talked about carrying ourselves with integrity and then the character and the fear of God. Some of it involves this because sometimes you're ministering to people and you get caught up because you didn't see the thing are coming, but eventually you find you're in the middle of something that you don't know how to get yourself out of. So uh, if it's sisters who put yourself together, if they're brothers, you don't minister to an opposite sex person of the opposite sex alone. You don't do that. Get somebody else, get a third party to just bring up the balance. Also that goes to, to ministry home visits. Yeah, being cautious when making a ministry home visit to a person of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You know, and avoid the possibility, you know, of a compromise uh, situation, compromising situation developing. Mm -hmm. So that you can, you know, by having somebody else accompany you. Even if you've been sent at a company, Maombi, Mutu, Nimugonja, or whatever situation it is. Go, going to a, a, for a ministry visit when, when you're, a person of the opposite sex, 
should be highly avoided, yeah? So that you don't expose yourself to things that would, you know, go down your integrity. We have talked about integrity. It is not encouraged at all. It is not encouraged at all. It is not encouraged at all. Even if you, even when you have a car, even when you have a car, carrying somebody of the opposite sex is, is, is you know, you, you just want to protect your integrity. It's, it's discouraged, yeah? Avoid that because you want to keep your integrity, you want to, to, to maintain the fear of God and your testimony. So as much as possible, where it can be avoided, let it be avoided because we've seen things happen out of some of these um, gestures, even some of the gestures that are considered to be kind. So <clears throat> that one just know it is out of order, it's not allowed. Now, we are also encouraged to seek to work harmoniously with the ministry leadership, respecting their God-given role. We are under, under this work, there's leadership, covering you, giving account over your life. As much as you can, seek to work harmoniously with them because they have a God-given duty, they have a God-given responsibility over your life and over the work. Just uh, as much as possible, let there be harmony so that we have flow in the work and there are no hindrances. You realize this is a work that is what we call frontline. Could be on the front line, we are in the battlefield. So we need to keep our guard. We need to be in our ranks. We need to take orders without questioning. We need to be respectful and all that kind of a thing so that the enemy doesn't find any loophole and, and does not strike us because of that. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a work where you, we need to keep tight, keeping everybody in their ranks everybody maintaining their position, everybody taking instruction, all of us working in harmony, all of us working in obedience, all of us loving the Lord, all of us being prayerful. When the call intercessors, we are all, of the, all there. We are so that we, can, we, we don't give any foothold to the enemy to throw an arrow or to attack the work in any way because all of us are responsible. So we are called to be responsible. <laughs> In that way, we are to, called to maintain harmony in the work. We are called to keep in our ranks and just respect our God-given uh, duties and roles of our leaders. We also need to show royalty and support to the ministry, to the ministry leaders, and even to the church. Wherever you go, show royalty, so uh, sh uh, show support, yeah? Can I look at you and see you, you are, are, are a loyal person? Can I look at you and say, you are so supportive? I should be able to see that. I should be able to see where your allegiance is. I should be able to see your support for the work. I should be able to see your loyalty. I know I, I've said that and I remember there are times you used to give people fear. Some people, it's not that they were lacking in fear. They, they had the money, but they preferred to keep the money and still come over to the ministry, get money for fear. You find them eating uh, burgers and, and, and juice, or they would do, do that money from some other purpose yet they did not entirely need to be given because it's not like they were wanting, but they, they want to just take because it is being given there freely, but, and yet somebody else could have benefited. Yeah, so that is wrong. Are you, what, how are you carrying yourself? You know, are you, are you, are you really supportive? Is that being supportive of the work? Is that being loyal, you know? So let, let your loyalty be seen. 
let your support for the work be seen, you know, let your service for the work prove yourself, you know, as a member, prove yourself, you know, in your commitment. Let it be something that is evident. Let it be something that is not questionable. I look at you and I have questions. Yeah. Trust the Lord to make you loyal. Trust the Lord to make, make you supportive of the work. Trust the Lord to make you committed to the work. And just sell yourself out for the sake of Christ. And in this particular vineyard where we've been given to serve and given a call, especially to the young people. Another very important thing I'll talk about, I don't know what time it is. We have 10 more minutes or so. Another important thing I'd like us to talk about is uh, being able to be approachable, being able to be open to correction and instruction. As a member of the work, it is very, very important to be approachable. Can you be approached by anybody? Mm -hmm. Or you only want to, you, I know people would say, ah, come and see Fulani, which name do I call? I can, nobody can tell me anything. I can only hear if it is so-and-so saying. You know, that is wrong, yeah? I will not, be approachable. Let it be approachable, be teachable. Be open to correction. Be open to instruction especially from leadership and all those who, who have genuine interest for your well-being and godly interest for your, for your welfare, yeah? Be approachable, be somebody that can be corrected. Because if you fail to, get, to be that kind of a person, you have a big problem. I mean, it's just a matter of time. Be open to correction. Let let somebody feel they can come and correct their sister for whatever they seem to be not liking, you know, something that could be going wrong or some caution, just some caution you need. Yeah, be approachable, be open to correction. Am I open to correction? Just ask yourself, am I the kind of person who's open to correction? Am I? You know? Because once you get that to that place that you're not open to correction, then there's danger looming. Be somebody open to correction, open to instructions. You can be easily be given instructions and you follow without a, a lot of drama, you know, you know, especially these people, if you know that whoever is correcting you has genuine concern for you, has godly interest over your life and your welfare, especially the leaders, they're watching over your life, they're accountable for you. Are we ready to do that? Are we ready to give ourselves? Are we ready to, to be corrected? Are we ready to be, you know, to be instructed without somebody feeling like they're struggling to reach to you? They are struggling to share certain things with you. Hmm? Are you that kind of a person? Please be open to correction. Because those who are, who are open to correction have, have, have a lot to learn and they will go far. Yeah. Another very important thing, I think this is a topic on its own. I'll be able to take it and I'll, I'll, I'll be able to take it with, that, with us next time is the matter of our dressing. Is the matter of our, how do we look? Our outlook. I'll be able to take some time next time, probably when you give me a chance to speak, because this is not something I'll just speak in one minute and then I say I've finished. There are quite a number of things I would want us to share in depth concerning our dressing. Why? Because we're, we're, how we appear wherever we go, number one, even if it's not wherever we go, just even in church matters a lot, says a lot about us. And uh, especially out there, determines whether people appreciate you, receive you, what you have, or they have question marks about. We have a rule about being decent in the in the in the in the ministry, and Pastor always talks about even for the brothers being smart with a tie. When you're going to minister, be smart, be in a tie. Don't show up in a shirt, t-shirt, and a jeans. Mm -hmm. Uh, trouser 
be well dressed up, you know, just being neat in a clean shirt and a tie. That is a rule that has been there since I came to the work a lot, a lot of many years ago. Yeah, being clean and being in a tie speaks volumes about your seriousness, about even the gospel you're presenting. Sisters, we are encouraged many times to be decent in long, um, modest dress because uh, we are out there ministering. So anything can happen. And if you're out there ministering, you're out there maybe also ushering, anything can happen. You can't appear in short clothes. You can't appear in revealing clothes. You can't appear in, in long slits. You can't appear in low cleavages. You can't appear, you know, with, the, with the, some things that expose us. Yeah, outfits that expose us too tight. You can't appear in them like that because then now, especially in school, you know, when, when we go there, because they, because they are still very young, they get, the, the, they are drawn, the attention is drawn to us. So you can imagine if you are looking, you have appeared in a certain way, they will not even receive the word. They will be, you will be the talk of the week, the, the weekend. And, and you will always be remembered how you appeared because first impressions last, they will always remember how you appeared, how you looked like, and that to erase that picture is not easy. So instead of uh, bringing uh, an embarrassment to the work, there's a way we are supposed to present ourselves when we go to minister so that we're able to share the gospel and, and be able to, to reach them. Eh? And, and our dressing does not become a hindrance because they just wondered how, how we appeared and yet we had gone to, to, to minister. So I will want to speak maybe in depth concerning that in our next session or when I'm given a, some time to speak, because I think it's a topic that is very important, not just even for ministry, but for just our lives as believers. I'll be able to share some insights with us next time. But just know, dressing is also very key. When you are going, afadhali yato kwa ngena ngoza kwa za kwa na mission, ukijua ni ngoza adabu, ngoondefu, ngoa ambazo wazita kwa ibisha atawe mwenyewe. We also, when we go to places to minister, we have, um, we have a way we operate. If it's serving, if it's serving ourselves, eating quickly, preparing early in the morning, when you're preparing, you prepare in good time, you leave the basin clean, you leave the bathroom in good shape, you leave the toilet flushed, you leave the house, if you're staying in somebody's house, you leave it in order. You don't leave things everywhere because you are man of God, woman of God. You leave, if it's a place, places we have lived, we have left there when you are leaving to go back to Nairobi. We've left even having washed the bed sheets. We didn't leave them with our dirty sheets, you know. And then they wonder what kind of people these are. For the, they're able to receive that message very, very easily because of the way you have, you carry out yourself, you know. Being able to work together quickly, if it's cleaning, whatever you do, don't feel like, don't let others do while you're there storytelling and supervising, not wanting to help at all, giving stories, you know, and, and, and or just observing as others do you, you're busy on your phone, and then you talk badly, you should not, uh, we all got there to be, to, to, to serve, we're in the vineyard, all of us, so everybody working together harmoniously, you know, in unison, and so that we can be able to accomplish whatever we need to do in that short time, because it's normally a very short time. So things really move fast. So there's a way all that, and then now when, so that when you come to the service looking clean and ready to minister, we can now carry on in victory. But there are other things behind the scene that, you know, make working together uh, easy and, 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 and uh, allows things to flow before we show up before people ready to minister. There are certain things that we, you know, we have to, we have to consider. There are other, certain things we work on, we work together behind the scenes before we appear out here you know, on, the, on, 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 the, on the pulpit. So may the Lord help us as we give ourselves. We would want to, I'll want to put a stop there. Next time uh, we will carry on maybe with the, with the topic of dressing and modesty.
where maybe I can give more insights and whatever else that uh, the Lord brings uh, to my remembrance that we need to know, I will be able to handle that. So I'd like to end this session here. If anybody has anything to say or any questions to ask, I can allow you to do that before we wrap up. And then I'll give it over to either Kosge or Julian before we pray together. So over to you. Any questions, any, any responses? Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, kindly, if you have any question, raise up your hand or kindly unmute or write it on the chat and then we'll be able to uh, address it. Uh, Mom will be able to address it. Thanks a lot, Mom, once again. That was profound and in-depth. And uh, I believe that all of us, we have received something. God bless you. Any question, please? There's a hand raised, Marty. Yes, Marcy. Is she is she is she asking or is she texting? <clears throat> She's raised her hand, but I suspect that um, she has not been uh, given the privilege to unmute. I don't know, is that the most uh, part? Kindly host, kindly uh, unmute uh, Mercy. Yes. The, the host, can you mute us? If you are uh, on mute, you are the host of the meeting. Who? Oh, Sarah. Yes, ma'am. Masi, she has left. Oh. I think maybe she and mom, uh, as we wait for that to be sorted, we can have people writing a text in the chat box yeah. and then report that. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was about to say. If you have anything, let's just, we can text there. I'm not seeing any text. Victor, you are on. Uh, yeah, Victor, kindly go ahead. I can see you're raising your hand. Yeah, uh, first is to appreciate uh, Pastor for the. <clears throat> For the for the I, I can call it uh, advice and also it's so profound and I've learned a lot. My main question is uh, while you are once you're through with your secondary, I would like to know how are you how are you able to sustain uh, yourself uh, financially and also concerning the issue of fair. Uh, how was it coming on board? Because I'm sure not not maybe you are working or something. Where was the fund coming from? Because I'm just wondering if uh, at, my, at, at, at the level I am in, whatever I'm getting is not uh, sufficient to me alone. I'm just wondering, how are you able to, to provide even fair for even the others who are not able to? Thank you. 
when I was younger or is of late. When I, was, I was, when I finished high school. And I'm not sure I got him right. When I finished high school, I, I think I stayed six months, I got a job. Because I was supposed to go to university, I wasn't able, I didn't get that opportunity. So somehow God gave me a job and wherever, where we used to stay was a walking distance to town. So many times it was not a problem for me to, to walk. So I'd walk from wherever we used to stay to town, to KCC or to city hall where the meetings used to be. But I know when we used to go, because the prayer meetings many times they used to happen at, um, at the South Sea, Pale Kongoni Primary. So obviously that one there, I needed some fare. I think I just used to find somehow fare. I used to find some fare and come. At the same time, God gave me a gift to, to do hair. I would, do, I would do lines for all the people around my estate. I would come, do their lines, and then I would get some pocket money for myself. So that's how I used to survive, pocket money for myself and also share with the ministry. And even later on, when I got married and we, we know we, as we've been living by faith somehow, since I think I, I, I got married. And um, so somehow God would just provide the money. We find, or we would come, I remember many times, there are also times where we would, people would just give whatever you have, we'll an extra, an extra 50 bob, evil. An extra hundred, bring, bring, bring. Then we find that we have a, a pool here of money that is ready to help those of us in need. Yeah, so I think many, that is how God uh, helped us uh, during that time. They were able to support those of us in our midst who are genuinely in need and uh, so that we can move. And many, God never failed. Many times God came through. And then also I know at some times when we would minister, some places we, we would get some, they would, they would give us a love offering. And that is part of the money that will also go in supporting the work and uh, raising bus fare or even some food for some people. I don't know whether that uh, helps. That is why I intentionally put there that thing about tithing. Because we should learn to tithe. We should learn to give. Learn an, as an individual. Don't, don't just let me uh, look up to God in faith. You also need to raise your faith and trust God for finances. Raise your faith, whatever responsibility you have, whatever assignment you have, whatever work you have to do. You're diligent, you're faithful, you're on time, you're excellent so that you can see God also turn things around for you, turn things around for you, work on your behalf, increase you from one level to another. So I intentionally put that thing there because like I said earlier, when the work began, it was started at primary level. It increased to high school, it increased to university to spread its wings to colleges and now even churches. And these people have grown from primary to secondary. They have grown to, to university level. They have graduated from university while they're still in the ministry. They've started getting jobs. They are now career people. They are now family people. So you see, you need to learn. There's a, there's a way you have to learn this. It's, it's one of the principles in Christian life, giving and tithing. I put it there intentionally so that you, we don't have the language of people saying, I don't have fair or I don't have um, money to give. And then even the little that God gives you, you, you just swallow everything and you, 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 you neglect that principle. So I put it there intentionally because we are all growing and we need to learn that. We need to learn that because it's an important uh, principle as for us believers. Yes. I don't know whether I've made any, I've made myself clear.
cost gain. Cost gain or Julian. Did I lose you guys? Somebody is asking a question. I have a question. How about when you minister to somebody and they give their offering? Kindly give a way of handling this. Thank you. When, when you come, Somebody un unmute, unmute the, the, the brethren. Unmute Cleophas, unmute Sister Julian. When somebody gives you an offering, you can bring it to the treasurer. If you go somewhere and they give you a love offering, you have gone there in the name of the ministry. So when they give you, they give you because of the ministry. So you, 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 you are able, you, it's just prudent that you come and say, this is what was given. And then, and then you're able to share with the treasurer so that now that is what also goes on to help with other, with other missions and all that. So, when you, when you go out and you're given a, 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 an offering, it's because you are given on behalf of the ministry. You're given because you went in the name of the ministry. So it's prudent to just come and share with the treasurer and say, this is what was given so that it can continue to just uh, facilitate ministry activities as the Lord is just continuing to establish us. So please, that is the, how we handle that. Thank you. Have the guys been unmuted? Sarah, have you been unmuted? Cleophas, you guys are still muted. So now what should I do? I can't hear nobody, no response. I can't hear nothing. Can we go ahead and pray? The, I think they should be able to unmute themselves so they can try to unmute. Okay. Are you still unable to unmute? Can we pray, Cleophas and, uh, and Julian? Victor, did you get me? Did I answer your question? Okay, I'm thinking we can pray. Still muted. Okay, all muted. We have no more questions, so we can continue next time. I think I'll take time to deal with that other sensitive matter that normally takes the prompting, conviction, and pushing by the Holy Ghost. The topic of dressing. That's uh, that's that's quite. Uh, should be shared in details. I can't just brush over it in these few minutes. So I think we can pray and then we can exit. Thank you for coming. The Lord bless you and help us to, to do our part of the calling in this vineyard and uh, do it with excellence and in the fear of God and with great results and impact seeing that, that we are living in a perverse generation and our youth are really in need. So may God help us take our place in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. We give you glory. 
magnify your name because of who you are. We thank you for these training sessions. I pray for every brother and every sister represented here, and even those of us who are not able to come. May you continue to teach us and to train us as far as righteousness is concerned, as far as building your kingdom is concerned, and that you will work with your spirit, O oh my Father, to continue to guide us and to help us in the way that we should go, O oh my Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every brother and every sister that you shall continue to draw us to yourself. Let the fear of God rule and reign over our hearts, O oh my Father. Continue to give us a burden for the work, O oh God, a burden for souls, O oh King of glory. Give us to live circumspectly with one another and even in your fear, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every member of the ministry where they are spread out in this nation, O oh God, that indeed in this season that you're doing a new thing, you shall help us redig the wells, oh my Father. You shall set our hearts on fire for the work of the kingdom, oh God. You shall anoint us afresh even for the work that is awaiting us out there. You shall give us new strategies, oh God. You shall continue to network us with people that matter even in the marketplace, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, that indeed, and many words you have spoken, the many prophecies you've given concerning this work, we shall continue to experience them in our day and in our time. So have your way by your spirit, oh my Father, move in our lives, oh God, put us in another pedestal, oh God, remove every shame, oh my Father, and oh God, every tag that has been put over the work, you are doing a cleanup, oh my Father, and setting us up on another path too. And so we look to you in great anticipation and in great victory for what you have begun to do even in this season and for what you shall continue to do. And so we want to bless you and to want to exalt you. I commit every leader in the, in, the, in, the, in the work, oh God, before your throne of grace and mercy, you shall give us to work in unity, oh God, in precision, in excellence. And oh my Father, all glory and honor shall come back to your name. I cover each one of them with the blood of Jesus, together with their families, oh God, those who have families, we raise them before you. I pray for every member that indeed we shall experience you in your newness and in your freshness. You shall reignite your fire again in our lives. You shall take us even back to those ancient places where you have caused us to walk before. To your glory, to your praise, and to your duration. And so we thank you as the trainings continue, indeed continue to inspire us, continue to teach us, and to continue to bless our hearts. We thank you and we bless you. We went for the night. We thank you that you shall watch over us. You shall grant us the sleep of the righteous. We pray that you shall keep our spirits open and even anticipating, even as we trust God for the service of tomorrow. We look to you and we bless you because your faith receive all the glory and all the honor for this far you have brought us, even as a work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the, the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Okay, now you are on mute. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Good night.